The name is Round Robin Shiruling Agarwal. So it is one of the sacred shiruling Agarwal. Uh, normally the sacred shiruling Agarwal is used to uh, CPU schedule the processor in the processor ready to, to execute at next step, next step, next okay. So it schedules the processor. For that we are using the many algorithms. So one of the algorithm is CPU shiruling Agarwal. Okay, so in this, what is, how it is work? The round robin, CPU shiruling Agarwal, how it is work? So basically, operating system gives a fixed time period to each and every processor in the process ready queue. That time period is called quantum, which is in millisecond, which is in millisecond. So if your processor executes its process on CPU for a given millisecond, quantum period. After that, the next process in the ready queue is preempted with the CPU and executes its process for a given quantum period. And next, the next process in the CPU is preempted and start its execution for a given period. So similarly, the processors in the uh, ready queue, all processes in the ready queue, are occupied the CPU to finish its work for a quantum period. So in this principle, uh, the round robin shifting algorithm, these processes uh, schedule the processes in the process ready queue to uh, occupy the CPU to finish its work. So now we see it's the working principles of the round robin scheduling uh, algorithm with exam. So in this example, we are having number of processors and, and its first time. So in this example, we have three processors. The label as P1, P2, P3. So the first time of the P1 is 24 millisecond. And first time of the P2 is 3 millisecond. First time of the P3 is 3 millisecond. So this is the execution time of each and every processors in the process ready group. Okay, so the quantum period for this example is 4 milliseconds. So each and every process is adapted to the quantum period 4 milliseconds. So now we see the quant chart. So through the quant chart we can find the average waiting time. And, and based on the average waiting time we can choose which algorithm is based in the GPU scheduling. Okay, now see the quant chart. So the concert is start from the 0 to millisecond, start from 0 to milliseconds. So in this 0 to millisecond, the first process enter into the CPU to execute its works. The first process is P1. So the P1 occupy the CPU for 4 minutes, 4 milliseconds, 4 milliseconds, because the quantum period, given quantum period is 4 milliseconds. So only the 4 milliseconds only the P1 process its execution on CPU. After the 4 milliseconds, the next processor, P2, which is in the process ready to is occupied the CPU and it executes its work for another 4 milliseconds. Okay, so but the first time of the P2 is 3, so it no need to force milliseconds to finish its work. Within the 3 seconds, it can finish its work. So 4 to 7 milliseconds, the P2 process is occupied the CPU and finish its work. And in the seventh millisecond, the next process in the P3 is uh, enter into the CPU to execute its work. Okay, the enter in the seventh millisecond is first time is three, so the tenth milliseconds it finishes its works and it come out from the CPU. And the remaining process is P1 because uh, it, it has a 24 per milliseconds in first time. But in the first cycle, it finished only the 4 milliseconds. So remaining it has 20 milliseconds to execute. So that, that, that 20 milliseconds is executed uh, in the period of uh, quantum period. So for 10 to 14, it, it first executes its work. Then 14 to 18, it works. And 18 to 22, 22 to 26, and 26 to 30. So 10 to 30 milliseconds. It occupied the CPU to finish its work because its first time is 24 milliseconds. Okay, so this is a con chart. By using this con chart, we can know the waiting time of each and every processes. Okay, so now we see the uh, calculate the estimate the average waiting time. So before we estimate the average waiting time of all process in the process ready group, we first know uh, waiting time of each and every process. So the waiting time of P1 is. 10 minus 4. How we can know 10 minus 4? First of all, milliseconds is P1 occupy the CPU and finishes work. And after that, the next and next process is occupied. Then after finally the P1 enter into the CPU at 10th millisecond. So uh, 
4 minus 10, we will have 6 milliseconds. That is the waiting time of the process P1. Actually, the P1 comes into the uh, CPU 10 milliseconds. After the 10 milliseconds only, it finishes work. But before it enters in the 10 milliseconds, it was uh, entered into the CPU for 4 minutes, 4 milliseconds. So, uh, it's already finished the 4 milliseconds works. So, we have to separate the 4 milliseconds from 10 milliseconds. We will get the 6 milliseconds, that is the waiting time of P1. The next P2 waiting time is 4. So, in the 4th milliseconds, P2 process occupy the CPU to execute its work. And it finishes its work at the 7th milliseconds. So, at that milliseconds, uh, P3 enter the CPU. So, the waiting time of the P3 is 7 milliseconds. So, uh, average in me, we have to calculate the 3 process waiting time by 3. Number of processor, uh, we will get 5.6 milliseconds. That is the average waiting time of this example using the router operation in the algorithm. Thank you.